Hello and welcome to this tutorial of the Talmud Trainer Workbook, which is a workbook designed to teach Gemara skills as you learn. This book is designed for students um, and teachers, and it can be used in a classroom. It can be used in a digital form, whether on an iPad, smart board, um, or otherwise. And um, throughout the book, you will find icons which each icon represents a different type of tool that can help the learner. And let's go dive in and see what's inside. So, first thing is an explanation of the different um, the different icons, okay? This over here I, I call the information bar on the side of each page to introduce the Gemara. There is a background section, if there's any background that needs to be filled in, um, before one can understand that particular sugya or section of Talmud. There is keywords, which is incredibly important. These are words, or milas mafteach, words that unlock the structure of what is going on in that section of the Talmud. There are musagim, concepts. There are challenging, um, challenge sections for students who already got it while their peers are working. I used to work the, use these sheets as um, as uh, Chavruta style um, learning. And what would end up happening is is that some students would get it already. So I put in a challenge for them. Um, then there is um, a section called Taich, which that's Yiddish for translation. And basically that would be like your little Milon, little dictionary on the side um, if there's a hard word. Then there's a section called Go Figure, and this is featured at the end of the um, workbook more um, when I assume that the student already knows that information from previously, but I know that time um, has a way of helping students forget, so I gave them a little hint to figure it out. And then a word connection um, to remind students where they've seen something before. Okay, I'm also going to show you um, the skills box. Um, skills skills box is where a skill is introduced, an example is shown. Then there's a practice section um, before the students dive into a particular text. Okay, now how does that work? Then there will be Shalot the Chazara. Um, there would be questions for review. Let's see it in action. First Mishnah in Hakonis. Okay. First, we want to teach a skill. Okay, this is a very basic skill. This is the beginning of the year. Dividing a Mishnah into case and din or mikra and din. Um, just using words like chayav, patur, mishalem, right? That means a din is being stated. And I tell the students, mark after that with a line that that's the end. The din has been stated. Right before is usually a comma, so you know that until then is the mikra, is the case, and then comes the din. Sometimes it can get a little, there could be a few extra words in there, and then um, it'll be uh, a little, hard, little harder than that, but this is a basic one, and they can practice that right here. I tell them right away, dive in on the information bar. The first thing they'll have is an exponent, is a practice session, place a comma between each case and din, right? A period after each din and number the cases. So the students would dive in right now to the to the um, section. Akonis Tzandir, what they would do is uh, they would look for the words Ah, Pator, one line. Chayav, one line. Pator, okay. Chayavin, all right. Um, here we go. Okay, so we got a we got a bunch, and then we have to number them. So one, okay, two, etc. So that's what the student would do. They would we can review it as a class afterwards. Um, Rashi, the student could we would learn Rashi would teach we would teach the um, concepts basic concepts for Rashi, and then we would learn the Rashi inside. As a class, moving on to a harder skill. Okay, so identifying the major components of a Gemara. There's 
lot of components in the Gemara. There's Mishnah, Brisa, Tosefta, Memra. How do we know which is which? Who's talking here? So we see um, Tnan for a Mishnah, Tanya for a Brisa, Tanra Banan for a Brisa, a Amar for a Memra. Okay, and um, and I teach them how to then go and circle those key words. And on the side, mark off, oh, this is a proof from a Mishnah, this is a proof from a Brisa, because you have the Dalid, Ditnan, Ditanya, right? And that helps them map out what's going to happen, the terrain ahead, even if they don't know how to um, yet um, understand the translation without a dictionary or an art scroll. Um, now, here you have the practice activity. Divide the piece up at the Mishnah, Brisa, um, you know, to set, you know, memra and a pasuk. Um, how do they do that? Well, they go. Well, they just learn that skill, and they see, you know, Amar Ravmani Bar Patish. Okay, so we have a we have a memra. Then we have um, we have a ditnan. So we have a quote from a mishnah, proof from a mishnah. Um, Shanemar, we now have a pasuk, okay, um, etc. We can further divide further divide this piece, but you get the point. They hope. Um, now, one really cool thing, which is very important, is to build this. I say really cool because when once you teach this, you feed this to the students, you give this tool in their hands. You will be so amazed, um, and they will be amazed with themselves how they can look at all these words and suddenly start making sense of it. And there's called keywords. And I have them um, printed on the side in the information bar. Any keywords, there's over a hundred keywords in this parak alone. Um, Tanra Banan, Mantana, Ditnan, Shanemar. And as the year progresses, the students need, um, they're seeing these same keywords over and over again. And it's helping them to break up the Gemara. So here are examples of typical questions. You can have vocabulary, you can have charts to fill out, you can have um, written questions to write on. Let's look at another skill that the workbook explores, and it's possible for students then to dive in and do right away, um, finding the start and end of a quote from a pasuk. Um, you could use keywords like dechsiv, shenema, okay, to tell you um, where a quote starts. Or you can see that the Aramaic changes to Lashon HaKodesh, so you know that this is um, coming from a different textual source, whether a Mishnah um, or a um, or a Pasuk. You could also look up the Pasuk using the Torah Or, the Torah Or HaShalem, um, and I tell them, I show the students, I show my class where to find it. Um, the Torah Or will either give you the, you know, the Sefer, the Parak, and Pasuk, and I show the students an example, right, um, that they would see a little Aleph, they would look it up on the side if it's one of the um, fancier, newer versions of Gemara, or if it's an older version of Gemara, they would see a little Shemot Chafalif, or just Shemot Chafalif, they'd have to scan the parak, and you show them to look it up in the source, and then you can now know, once you see the source, that only the words, Velo Yishmerenu Ba'alav, appears in that Pasuk, and from here and on, back to the Gemara's words. Then you can tell them, okay guys, practice. Find the start and end of all three, of all psukim in the text using all three methods above. So in this text coming here, um, we have all these words. We have the chsiv, um, we have a, we have a shenemar, um, etc. for them to be able to practice practice on. Of course, we have um, keywords that we're introducing over here, Afilu Teima, Shiny, Masnisa, Dechsev, as words that they're being introduced to here. Some more Shaila Sechazara, review questions. More review questions, underlining the words in the Pasuk, which tell you what you need to know. Another skill which I teach students in this workbook is using the Mesorah Sashas um, to find, uh, you know, sort of the hyperlink to the rest of the Shas 
to find where this is um, discussed elsewhere. I show them, you know, I show them how it works. You, know, you follow the little the little letter to to the side. I translate for them. Ayin yud is ayin taisis akman. You know, the zayin amud bet devar mas nafla, and you know. I have them do exercises to find them. Again, keywords, musagim, challenges, um, and then practi- practice inside um, pra- placing punctuation. Look up the references in the Masar Sashas. So this is more of an advanced um, sugya for them, more of an advanced practice here. Notice that... I have a feature called WBR, where I have this table um, in different places in the book where students can say, WBR, what's bothering Rashi? Let's train them how it's done. First, you list the Dibra Maschil. What would be a possible, possible question on those words? What would bother Rashi about that? And then, you know, after we learned the Rashi, I would have them summarize the Rashi, the explanation given, and it's just very helpful for them to understand why we're learning Rashi to begin with. Okay, so what is really cool is that by the end of the book, um, we start to get to a situation where students have seen a lot of key words, and all we need to do is tell them, okay guys, underline all the key words and note their function, place in the punctuation marks, and try to figure out the answer and be ready to explain it to the class, um, in other pages, I'll tell them, get right to the Shaila Sechazara. Start answering the questions. Why? Because you already know what a lot of these keywords meant from previous um, previous uh, sugis that we have learned together. And this is the goal of Talmud Trainer, to teach students to be independent learners. As we get really advanced, we're just punctuating the Gemara and answer the review questions. And of course, this is going to be reviewed in class and the teacher will teach it over. Um, but it's important for the student to have the opportunity to have a, have a go at it, try it out themselves. More questions, more Shah Sahazara questions here. And here, for this level, would be a harder one. Would We would um, ask students to look in Rashi and provide um, answers for review. So this has been um, a quick overview of what the features the workbook offers. Um, I didn't show you that there are several tesis, um throughout the um, throughout this parak akonis which are dissected in this manner and skills such as im taimar, the question, op- questioning words of tesis, the answering words of tesis, um among other skills, several tesis skills are discussed for advanced learners, and um, this can be used either as a beginning Gemara tool, and the Tesis would be ignored at that level, or could be used um, for more advanced students. Should you wish to learn more, or uh, purchase workbooks, or um, see any more samples, or talk with me for ideas, please contact me, rabbiwagshul at gmail.com. Thank you for listening.